George's grandfather was Billy Mason Cowan, and his grandmother was Charity Ann Hardwick. They were born in Southern Kentucky, Wayne County, and Knox County, Kentucky, and they moved to Crab Orchard, Kentucky in the early 1920. His father was William Roy Cowan, and his mother was Lily Howard. When George was born, his parents lived in Mount Adams in Cincinnati, Ohio, just below the Mount Adams area. After George, he had a brother, Kenneth. Soon after that, his brother, Roy Elwood, was born, which died of cat scratch fever at the age of three. His beautiful sister, June, was then born. Sometime near the age of eight, George moved in with his grandparents in Crab Orchard, Kentucky. Living on the farm, he learned how to do all the chores around the farm, taking care of the animals, doing blacksmithing work with his grandfather until the age of around 16. At the age of 17, he enlisted in the Civil Conservation Corps, the Three C's, working in Castledale, Utah, building roads and bridges. In the summer of 1938, my dad visited his cousin in Pineville, Kentucky, to get some temporary work for helping to build a spring house. There was not much work in the, those days. It was here that he met and would become the love of his life, my mother, Martha Collett, in a small coal mining town called RJ. It's about five miles outside of Pineville. They met at church where Dad asked her if he could walk her home the next night. She said yes. Martha Collett was born May 28, 1921 in Pymole, Kentucky. Her parents were Carlo Bertain Asher and Odie Collett. They were living in Bradfordtown, Kentucky, just outside of RJ. You see, it was said in those days that my mom was the prettiest girl in Bell County, Kentucky. And if you've seen the pictures, you would believe it. Well, it was not that long that George, my dad, was told by my mom's uncles that if he planned to live, he had to start carrying a gun with him everywhere he went, as long as he was in Bell County, Kentucky. Here's a story my dad told us many times. One evening before church, when he was still down there, before he went back to Cincinnati, and he had gotten to know the mom, my mother, the word got around that a young man who had determined to marry my mom was waiting, going to be waiting for dad outside the church. When church was over, he was going to kill dad so that he could have mom as his woman. A local man with a very well-known reputation of those parts as being tough and, and somebody that you don't fool with. Well, he had taken a liking to my dad. When church was over, dad said he took his gun out and started for the door ready for what was to come outside. Just before getting to the door, this man walked up and stood beside my dad. And dad said he pulled his coat back and revealed two pearl handles, uh, two pearled pistols, handled pistols. He looked at my dad and said, George, I like you. I'm going to stand beside you until my toenails fall off. Well, they both walked out the door and as they came outside, the man as promised was waiting for dad. Dad's friend with him, with the reputation, said loud to ask, so everyone could hear, boy, boys, this here boy is my friend and if you want to take him down, you're gonna to have to face me with him. Well, needless to say, no shots were fired that night and everyone dispersed, leaving my dad and his 
newfound friend outside the church. George enlisted a second time into the three seas. In October 3rd, 1939, this time he was in a three seas camp, company number 1534, GLO, Sitkin, Oregon. Cutting down trees as big as mobile homes, he eventually made his way into a baker's position, making hundreds of pies a day for the company. On February 5th, 1940, George returned from the Three Seas for the last time and started work at the Baldwin Piano Company, working as a piano polisher, making $15 per week. He then proposes to Martha Collett, and they were married in Pineville, Kentucky on June 8, 1940. Martha moved to Cincinnati and they take up residence at 1216 Sycamore Street in Cincinnati, Ohio. George moved on to working at the Crosley Radio Corporation in Cincinnati as a stock chaser. Mother the queen of my heart. On June 22, 1943, they had their first child, Judy Faith. On January 8, 1944, George enlists in the Navy in the Armed Guards. From July 22 to August 9, 1944, he was on a merchant marine ship, the SS Cape Martin, when he was part of the assault and occupation of Guam. He would later receive the Bronze Star upon a ribbon. Martha went to church on Christmas Eve that same year, praying to God that somehow George would get leave home for Christmas. When she arrived home from church, she noticed a light in her apartment. George was waiting for her and she got her miracle that night. The next miracle would come nine months later. On January 1945, he was assigned to the SS Sea Corporal. Later that year, he was heading to Japan with the greatest invasion force ever, which was later aborted after the U.S. dropped two atomic bombs on Japan that ended the war. He returned home in December 1945. After Carolyn's birth, they eventually had George Dale, who died after eight hours. Gary Leon Cowan was then born, their first son. Gary enrolled in the Navy after college and became a Navy pilot, and later on continued his career as a pilot. They would go on to live in South Lebanon for a while, and then eventually they bought a home at 1263 Clearwell Drive in Lublin, Ohio. They moved in in 1953. Rebecca Lynn was born in 1957. And then later on, Mark Elwood was born in 1960. George discovered a passion in God's word and soon was an ordained pastor at a church in Boston, Ohio. The Cowans were still making frequent visits to visit Martha's family in RJ, Kentucky. It was during many of these visits that George became well known in Kentucky where people would be standing outside the church to hear him preach and lay hands on the sick and see many healed of all types of sicknesses, including cancer. He preached salvation, helping others, and freedom from condemnation. He always practiced what he preached, which is somewhat of a rare trait these days. He could somehow read the Bible and teach it to others while only having a fifth grade education. George and Martha had large gardens on Clarewell Drive. George became a truck driver and continued until his retirement. Martha became a nurse and her daughters followed her. Judy and Carolyn both became nurses. Becky would become a nurse and then 
continue on and become a physician's assistant. George and Martha loved camping, and George loved his deer hunting with his friends and eventually his sons. Eventually, as time went on, music became integrated as part of our family's lives. This was George's passion, was his music.
She sang that song that uh, Gene Autry wrote, one of the first, he wrote it, and it was, he was the first one to record it. Is Silver Hair Daddy of Mine? I've Have you, you ever song. heard? I think I've heard the song, but I don't remember. Well, it, is it all right for me to sing? In a, in a key of D, it goes. In a vine-covered shack in the mountain.